Okay, real quick here, now that I've already started the recording, and I am recording now, so just so you guys know. Um, does anybody ever use QuickTime Player? Has anybody made videos at all? No, not really? Okay. Because I did this, I recorded myself last hour, and for some reason it kicked off halfway through it. I just wonder if anybody knew why it would do that, so, okay. So, anyhow, uh, we're actually going to start doing some math today. Before we do that, though, uh, a couple of announcements. just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. Um, we, uh, uh, when, I, when we give tests, okay, you guys, as long as we're in school, you'll do your tests in class about every three, four, five weeks, whatever. Whenever we're ready to take a test, we'll take tests. And when we take tests, we'll always review. You'll know about them. I'll tell you in advance. We'll have review sheets. We'll study for them, stuff like that. Um, and then we'll take our tests in class. This is for students that are online that are hopefully watching this video later today. Um, what they're going to do is this, and if we ever, if the entire school gets locked down again, I don't, I don't know what we'll do about tests because you guys won't be able to do this. Um, but for students that are online, if whenever we have a test, let's say we have a test on Tuesday, you guys are taking a test on Tuesday. The next Wednesday, which would be the very next day, the online students would take a test, okay? Um, and they would take it in the field house. They would come to the school and they would go right to the field house. There'd be parafros in there. They would hand them their test. They would have just as long as you have, which is an hour, to take their test. And then they would turn in their test to the parafros and then they would leave. They don't even have to come into the school, okay? And they will be socially distanced. They'll be at tables that are at least six feet apart. Um, like I say, they won't even have to come into the, to the school. They'll just go into the, the field house. I say you guys won't do that because if the entire school gets locked down, I can't have everybody. It just wouldn't be it wouldn't be big enough to put everybody in there. So if we ever get to that point, I'm not sure how we'll give tests. We'll have to figure that out if we ever get to that point. So again, this is mainly for online students, uh, and, and it's, again, it's always the next Wednesday when you when nobody has to come to school except for the parapros. Um, let's say that we have a test on Thursday, then the online students will take their test the next Wednesday. Okay, the next Wednesday, so they'd almost have like five or six more days for us to take the test. So that's the way we're going to do that for online tests. All of your homework is going to be submitted online through uh, Big Ideas Math. Okay, so we're going to start doing Big Ideas Math today. Uh, you don't need your laptops today. We're actually not even going to start the assignment. What we're going to do is uh, I'm going to go over some material, and I this is how I typically do it. I typically start new material. I put notes up on the board. I explain things. We cover all the material that we need to know. Then we eventually start the assignment. Uh, we're not going to have time to start the assignment today, but we are going to talk about the material. And uh, I always have some students say, do I have to take notes? Do I have to take notes? My response is, you can do whatever you want. And what I mean is this. You, you need to do what you need to do in order to be successful. Some people learn better just by watching. Okay? Some people learn better by writing stuff down. You need to do what's going to be best for you. Now, the only thing that's the drawback to you know, you know, not writing down notes is if you do forget something later on, you don't have anything else you can refer back to. I mean, you don't have anything, okay? So I would encourage you guys jot stuff down and, and hang on to your notes. Um, if you have this a spiral notebook, that's great. If you don't have a spiral notebook, uh, not right yet, but in a minute or so, you might want to grab a sheet of paper on my desk. Um, the only drawback to that is I don't care what class it is. If you just grab a sheet of paper off my desk when the bell rings, what, you, what happens all the time? I find three or four sheets of paper on the floor or on you know, notes that people left behind, whatever. If you have a spiral notebook, um, like Madison has, can I borrow that real quick? You know, she's less likely, I would hope, to lose this than she is a sheet of paper. Plus, everything's going to be nice and neat. First assignment, second assignment, third assignment, right in order. Okay? So, um, uh, but again, I mean, well, we're going to go over notes today. We're not even going to start the assignment. My regular Algebra 2 class I had last hour, we never even started the assignment. We just went over material. And again, it's, and it's not going to be a blow-off day then, just because we're not going to start the assignment. Um, we're going to cover the material so you'll understand it a little bit, and then we'll start the assignment on Monday, okay? So why don't you guys, if you need a sheet of paper, grab a sheet of paper, and we'll get started. Okay, so again, I would encourage you to do, I, I would encourage you to take notes, okay? And I hate doing this because I'm going to treat you guys like first graders here uh, every now and then. There'll be times I'll tell you, you know, 
write this down, how many times I tell you not to write stuff down, and how I'm gonna treat you like first, that's, because I, I think you guys are smart enough to know what you need to write down and what you don't need to write down. I mean, for example, if I put this up on the board, you know, I, I hope you're not writing that down going, oh, that's what one plus one is. I mean, you shouldn't write that down. You know that, okay? I mean, so, I mean, if you know something, you, you totally know it, it it's, it's all reviewed to you, you know, you're not gonna ever forget it, you know, don't worry about it. Oh, whoops, I seem to rake the board for that. Um, that would have been good. But, uh, so, if, there's times though, I'll be like, yeah, don't write this down and just watch, and, and there's a reason why, you know, because I want you to watch instead of, you know, spending all the time writing it down. And if I go through stuff too quickly, feel free to, you know, just ask me to slow down and repeat myself. I'll try not to do that, but I do do that at times. Um, also, just I think I said this the other day, you know, these videos that I'm making that I'm posting, you guys can still, I mean, these are mainly for the online kids, but let's say, you know, you, you leave the classroom like, I didn't understand that, man. I, I just didn't get it. I got lost. You guys, can, you guys can still look at these again. It's the same thing you just saw, but, you know, you can start it and stop it and, you know, slow it down and repeat and so forth. So, you know, feel free to look at these videos yourself as well. Okay, now parent functions. There are a whole bunch of parent functions, whatever the heck those are. We're going to talk about those in a second. But there's only four main ones that we're going to be dealing with in this chapter, okay? And this is good news, bad news, is that these are going to pop up from time to time throughout the year. So, I mean, if you get this section, that's good news because, you know, another month or two, they'll pop up again. You'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. This is easy stuff. I did that back in September. You know, in February, I'll, I'll refer back to the second day of school and say, hey, remember these things? And if you remember it, you're like, great, I got it, piece of cake. Bad news is if you don't get this, then you're going to struggle throughout the year from time to time. Not every day, but from time to time you're going to struggle. So these will pop up every now and then. So parent functions are functions that are, they, they have a common characteristic, okay? The first parent function we're going to talk about is something called a constant function, a constant function. Now. Once you jot that down, I'm going to put something on the board over here. If you would, just watch. Don't, don't write this next thing down. If I wrote this down, again, don't write this down right here. It says F, then it says parentheses X. In math, we don't call, we don't say F parentheses X. We say F of X. And if you don't remember this, it's not a huge deal, but I do want to make sure you know it now. When you see F of X, you can cross that off and put something else there. Does anybody know what you can replace f of x with when you see it? Anybody remember? Put your hand up. A y. Yeah, when you see f of x, if you don't like that and you want to put a y there, that's fine. It's, a, it's the same basic thing, okay? So, um, but I'm going to use f of x because our program on the computer uses f of x. But you just need to understand that y and f of x are basically interchangeable, okay? Now, a constant function would be like f of x. Well, the rule of the constant function is f of x equals k. Now, if you're going, man, there's no numbers there. It's all letters, OK? What you need to understand is k could be any number, any number, OK? So an example would be f of x equals 3. Another example would be f of x equals negative 4, OK? Those are examples of constant functions. Now, this is two examples. There's an infinite number of examples. I just wanted to list two of them. Now, I'm interested in what this thing looks like, okay? What this thing looks like. So, again, I'm going to go off to the side. If I put anything off to the side there, don't write it down. Just watch, okay? So it says f of x equals 3. Well, we already said, you see f of x. I can cross that out and make a y. y equals 3. And don't be shy here. Feel free to just shout out answers. Okay, I'm not going to make fun of you, at least not yet. Once I get to know you a little better, I might make fun of you every now and then. But, you know, don't be afraid to shout out answers. If I said, what is y equal 3? What does that look like? Who could tell me? And you could do it. If you know the answer, you could do it in two words, literally two words. Where is y equal to 3 if I was to graph it? What direction is y? Is that the, the left and right or is that the up and down? Do you guys remember? The y-axis guns. Up and down. So where is y3 at? If I said point at where y is 3. What's that? I thought I heard somebody say that. No? Where would y be positive 3? It runs up and down, so it's got to be up 3. Up 3 spots. Okay? So I go up 1, 2, 3. I'm going to put a dot right there, but it's not a dot. I'm going to put a dot, but we're going to alter that in just a second here. Okay? Now, put this on hold. we got to talk about regular algebra for a second here. If I gave you a graph of a, of a line, now you might have forgotten some stuff about lines. Let's review here. 
a big part of a line talks about the slope of it, okay? When I look at that line I did over there, does that line have a positive slope or does that have a negative slope? You guys remember just by looking at the graph, does that have a positive or a negative? What's that? Why? I'm not saying yes or no, why? Well, it's also pointing up. You're on the right track, but I will tell you this, it's a positive slope. You're on the right track, but why would it have a positive slope? Because the line is going up. It's going up from left to right. Now, you got to be careful. As I trace it from left to right, it's going up. If I trace it right to left, it's going down. Which are you supposed to do, right to left or left to right? Left to right. Easy way to remember it is this. How do you read? Left to right. You look at graphs the same way you read. When you read, you read left to right, not right to left. As I look at this graph, it's going up. This is a positive slope. How about this line right here? Is this line going up or is it going down? What was I doing, going up or down? Down. down. I tried to trick you, didn't I? Because I drew it like this. It looked like it was going up, because I drew it from right to left. It's actually going down. So that would have a negative slope. That is a negative slope, OK? If something has a constant slope, is it going up, do you think, or is it going down? If the temperature is, forget about math. If the temperature is a constant 88 degrees, what does that mean? Is it going up or is it going down? Stay it's staying the same. It's not going up or down. It's flat lines, OK? So this isn't just a dot. That's not positive because it's not going up. It's not negative because it's not going down. It's not going up or down. It's, a, it's always three. So where is this graph, y equals negative 4, where would that be? Where is y negative 4? How come down? You're right. Who said down? Why is it down 4? Why isn't it up 4? This is negative. If it was 4, you'd go up 4. So you go down 4. And you draw your constant graph through it. So, what does this look like? Some students say, oh, the constant graphs look like lines. Yes, they look like lines. We've got to do better than that. A lot of times students say, oh, they're straight lines. They're straight lines. I know what you mean to say, but I'm not making fun here, but lines have to be straight. There's no such thing as a curved line. By definition, lines have to be straight. Okay? So, any idea? The second hour couldn't answer this one. Any idea what kind of a line? It's a straight line. If they're going straight across like this, what that's called? What, what direction is this? Back and forth. Horizontal. Students tend to mix these up, horizontal and vertical. If you're into sports, do you ever get checked for your vertical leap? What do you do for your vertical leap? You jump up. Vertical's up and down. Horizontal's back and forth. So what is a constant graph? It's not just a line. It's a horizontal line. So it looks sort of like this. I would jot that down, OK? That's what a graph of a constant line looks like. It is a horizontal line. There are four parent functions we're going to talk about. That's the first one. The second one, I did the second hour, and they couldn't answer it initially. And then I put a different example up here, and they could. If I give you this right here, don't write this down. OK? Any idea what the heck that thing looks like? Y equals 3x plus 4 if I graph that? And I'm just looking for a general idea. You don't need to say it looks like this with you know 4 and 3 and all this stuff. I'm looking for one word, what it looks like. Like I said, a circle, or what does it look like? It's not a circle, I'll tell you that. Anybody know y equals 3x plus 4, what that would look like? This you should be able to answer. This will help you out. This should almost be like a, an automatic reflex when I say this. Y equals M X plus B. What is that? What is that? What is Y equals M X plus B? What is that? It's not a circle. What did M stand for? Do you guys remember what M stood for? Slope. What are, you, what are we talking about then? Slope of what? Lines. That's a line. Okay? It's called slope intercept form of a line. That's a line up there. Okay? That three and that four impacts it. But it's, it's a line, OK? So the second one we have here is called a linear. Linear is this line with AR at the end. A linear graph. A linear graph looks like a line. And it's a diagonal line. It's not a horizontal line. It's not a vertical line. It's a diagonal line, OK? Let's write down a diagonal line. And it looks sort of like this. And it doesn't have to go up. It could be going down from left to right, OK? 
linear, and that's of the form f of x equals mx, mx. Now, I'm going to put some stuff over here again that I don't want you to write. I just want you to watch. And if you don't get this initially, it's okay. It's okay. But hopefully by the end of this hour, you have it down pretty, pretty well. Because once you get it, it's pretty easy. If I gave you y equals 5x and y equals 5x plus 2, these are both lines, okay? If I graph this, whatever it looks like, and I graph this, whatever it looks like, it's not going to look exactly the same, though. Any idea, and it's okay to guess, it's okay to guess wrong, okay? What the heck's that plus 2 do to the graph? Any idea? If I graph this one, and I graph that one, but I put a plus 2, and don't just say it adds 2 to it. What I want to know is, what is it, how is the graph going to look different? It's not going to look exactly the same. It's going to look similar, but not exactly the same. Any guesses what that plus 2 it's going to take this line and do something to it. Any guesses? What's that? I heard something there. No? It's going to move it a certain direction. Any guesses? Up. How far? Two. Why, do you, why up? Why not down? It's plus. If it was minus two, it would move it down two. Okay? So it would be the exact same graph, but it's going to move it up two spots. Okay? So. Now, I'm just curious right here, and I'm looking for very basic non-mathematical answers. I don't want anything technical here, okay? If I gave you this right here, y equals 7x, and again, don't get technical on me. I'm looking for a very basic answer. Would y equals 7x be a constant graph, or would it be a linear graph? What do you think? Constant or linear? Any guesses? Okay, why constant? I'm not saying it is or isn't. It would actually be linear. Any idea why? Um, Again, this is a really simple, I'm not making fun here, but once we say the answer, it's a really simple response. Why is it a constant, I'm sorry, a linear graph, but not a constant graph? Um, because x means that it can be a different number than x. Let's make it even simpler than that. You know what this thing's got? An x. Y equals 12. Is that linear or is that constant? Constant, why? What'd you say? There's no x, that's what I'm talking about. Very simple, ain't no x. This right here is constant. And what it means by constant, again, if I give you this, just watch for a second. y equals 5x plus 2. I want you to understand, this right here, as I plug in values for x, this changes. If x was 10, this right here is going to be 50. 5 times 10. If x was 2, this turns into 10. 5 times 2. Now this one, some students, they, they struggle with this because it doesn't sound like it really makes sense. It's going to be a little awkward if you listen real carefully, but it's okay. As I plug in for values for x, is this going to change, this number right here? Why? Why isn't it going to change? You're right, it's not. Why? It doesn't have an x. This is always 2. Now this changes depending on what you plug in for x. Okay? If I plug in 3 for x, this turns into 15. If I plug in 3 for x, this is still 2. Okay? Because it doesn't have an x. Okay? So, the value of the whole thing changes, but this is something called a constant term. That never changes. That 2 never changes. Okay? All right. A constant is simply a number. It's just a number. A linear function is a number times x. Okay? A number times x. And that's a diagonal on it. Okay? Two more parent functions. Okay. So the biggest thing I want you to get right here is this. Constant, just a number. Linear is a number times x. The third one is something called a quadratic. A quadratic. And that looks like f of x equals x squared, x squared, okay? Now, if you can't answer the second hour, I couldn't answer this, and that's okay. I'm just curious if anybody knows. Any idea what the heck this thing looks like, x squared? It's not a line, I'll tell you that right now. It ain't a line. Any guesses? 
Jared Olp said he thought it was a, uh, looks like a square. Makes sense, X squared. Sounds reasonable. Wasn't right, it wasn't a square. He took a shot at it, though. What'd you say? Did you say something? Well, I thought you said the exact right answer. Sounded like something totally different. Huh? I'm not going to tell you now, and you'll know the answer. It looks like this. Now, when you're in algebra, they might have said, oh, that's U-shaped, okay? Okay, we're big boys and girls now, but we're not going to call it U-shaped. Something that starts with a P. Any guesses what that thing's called? Looks like parabola. It's pronounced parabola, okay? Let's say parabola, okay? That square makes it a parabola, okay? Okay. Now, examples. I gave you uh, f of x equals x squared minus 9. Now, if I graph this and I graph that, how's this second one going to look different? We've already answered this once. What's that minus 9 going to do? What's that? How come down? It's negative. Down how far? Down nine spots. What if it was plus nine? Up nine. Okay. All right. The fourth one is something called an absolute value function. Absolute values. Now, this is something I know you did in the previous class, but it's something you don't, when you do it, you like do it for like a couple days and then they never talk about it the rest of the year usually. Absolute values. See if you guys remember what these are. If I ask you the absolute value of negative 5, you guys remember what that would be? If Once you know it, it's really, really simple. The absolute value of negative 5. Anybody know that? 5. What's the absolute value of negative 12? 12. What's the absolute value of positive 8? Careful. Not negative 8. 8. The absolute value is the positive value. Okay, it's not the opposite value. What you need to understand is the absolute value of a negative is a positive. What's the absolute value of a positive? Still positive. It's still a positive number, okay? So absolute values are always positive, except for one exception. Anybody know the one exception? What can I take the absolute value of and it's not a positive? What's the number that kind of screws things up every now and then? Zero. What's the absolute value of zero? Zero. And zero's not positive or negative, neither, okay? Now, anybody remember the symbols for absolute value, what it looks like? Yeah, like two bars, okay? So if I ask you, don't write this down. Uh, the absolute value of negative five. I always make the bars a little bit bigger than the numbers, because if I ask for like the absolute value of uh, three, it kind of looks like what? 131. So I mean, you know, I don't care how big you make it, but if you're gonna do that, you know, make it a little more obvious, that way you can tell what it says. Otherwise it looks like 131, okay? So absolute value function is f of x, equals the absolute value of x. Now, the next thing I do not expect you to know, okay? Because that's something I don't believe you've ever done in algebra or geometry or like that. What an absolute value function looks like. Well, I'm going to put some stuff over here that you don't need to copy down. I just want to, want to show you how it's going to work. Absolute value function. I'm going to make up a little t-chart. So just watch over here. Y equals the absolute value of x. I'm going to plug in values for x. And in case you forgot, what can I plug in for x? I can plug in whatever I want for x. Whatever I want, OK? Doesn't matter what I plug in for x. I'm going to plug in 0, 1, 2, and 3. Why did I choose those? They're easy. I could have plugged in 34 ninths, 8.276, and negative 48,298,000 if I wanted to. OK? So these are easy numbers. If I plug in 0. The absolute value of zero is zero. What's the absolute value of one? One. Absolute value of two? Absolute value of three? Let's do three. Okay, so, and again, don't write this down, just watch. What does this look like? Let's plot them. Zero, zero is right in the middle. One, one is right one up one. Two, two is right two up two. Three, three is right three up two. Now, I'm thinking that looks like a line. And it does, kind of, so far. It's not a line, though, okay? 
Now, what haven't we plugged in that might be a good idea, though? We plugged in 0, 1, 2, and 3. What kind of numbers should we also maybe plug in, see what they look like? Well, I'm plugging some negative numbers. Negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Now, in a second here, I'm going to ask you a question that everybody should be able to answer. It's not a trick question. It's not even a math question. It's like, look at this. Tell me what it is. If I plug in negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So negative 1, 1 is left 1, up 1. Negative 2, 2 is back 2, up 2. Negative 3, 3 is back 3, up 3. This is not a trick question. This is not even a math question. What's it look like if I connect them? Not a trick question, guys. What's it look like? What? A V. It looks like a V. Now, we said this is U-shaped, which has a fancy name, parabola. You know what the fancy word for V-shaped is? V-shaped. That's what I call it. I don't think there's a fancy name for it. Looks like a V. It's V-shaped, OK? And I can connect these. I, I could have taken the absolute value of decimals in between, but it looks like a V. It's V-shaped, OK? OK, so it looks sort of like this. All right, it's V-shaped. An example would be uh, f of x equals absolute value of x minus 3, and f of x equals absolute value of x plus 1, OK? Now, these next questions, don't think hard on these, OK? 